Hello and welcome back to my channel. For those who are the first time here, my name is Zach. I'm 21 years old Russian who left Russia because of the war against Ukraine. Today is a very specific video on Vladimir Rodolfovich Slavyov, a.k. Russian couples, the author of the documentary movie about Putin, radio and TV host, owner of three elite mansions in Italy at the Lake Como, and the owner of the different medals from Putin in 2014 for liberating Crimea and in 2022 for services to the motherland. The person who threats the whole western world with nuclear weapon and just a synonym of the term Russian propagandist. Vladimir Rodolfovich Solovyov aka Russian Goebbels. Нацизм не должно быть. Вы нацист. Киев. Ну да не. Мать городов русских. Всем добра. Бобра всем, мразь. Бобра. Ура. Ты родину предала. Обломилась тебе старое заветренное говно. Уберите этого Эль Омбра дегенерата к чертовой матери. Забаньте это. Укранацистскую сволочь, чтобы сдохла. Даст украиночен райх? Мелкий райх украинский не имеет права на существование. Да хоть Гитлера дарете, в задницу себе и засуньте. Или тебе, мразь антисеминская, продавший честь русского офицера, свой грязный поганый рот открывать на верховного главнокомандующего. Это война не с Украины, а на Украине. Это война с НАТО. Уберите всех этих дур. Елена 33, Елена. Проклятую мразь. Завальте сразу хрена. Вовкаинской Должны войти в Париж. Если тебя Родина призвала, иди. Если пока тебя Родина не призвала, готовься. Я сказал забанить дуру Елену 33. Почему до сих пор не забанили? But before becoming Russian Goebbels, Vladimir Rodolfovich Solovyov was actually a liberal independent journalist who was even teaching economics at the Alabama University in the US. He was one of the people who criticized Putin for shutting down NTV, one of the best independent TV channels in Russia in the 90s and the start of the 2000s. So let's get deep into this container of trash, which is called Biography of Vladimir Rodolfovich Solovyov, and we'll see how he became the biggest Russian propagandist. Vladimir Rodolfovich Solovyov was born in Moscow in 1963 in the family of teachers a middle-class family. During his high school, he was interested in the karate, and it led to his interest in martial arts later in the future, and especially in his interest in contactless martial arts and his just different kinds of attempts of showing his power on his lives on the TV channels. And it's like a big meme at the moment on the Russian internet, and so let it be on the Western too. He graduated from Mining University in Moscow and then received his PhD at the Univer Institute of Economy and International Relationships. After the collapse of the USSR in 1991, he went to the US to fulfill his American dream and he was invited by um, uh, Alabama University to teach economics, but he didn't really work for a long, for a long time and he had to come back to Russia. And the reason for this, as he says, that FBI threatened him on something. I'm really curious what could he, he have done. So FBI gonna threat him or something. Anyway, so once he came back to Russia, he started doing business and he was producing different kind of equipment for nightclubs, for discoteca, as we used to say in Russia. Later, once he became a propagandist and once he gonna earn a lot of money from telling lies on the main TV channels of Russia, he gonna receive a lot of money and invest them in buying different mansions in Italy and a lot of lot of accommodations in Russia. And he will try to explain all of those new properties by doing business in the 90s. You know, doing business in the 90s, it's like a meme. 
all the governmental officials of Russia are trying to explain that, yeah, I'm, I'm so rich right now, not because I'm taking this governmental position, but because I was doing some kind of really, really successful business in the 90s. And then, well, it, it went bankrupt or I sold it. It is like saying that my homework was eaten by a dog. You cannot prove it anyhow. So I really doubt that he was able to earn so much money so he will be having this sheikh lifestyle for 20 years buying three mansions in Italy at the Lake of Coma, which is north of Milan, and just buying, buying and buying so much property in Russia. So right now his estimated uh, property value of all of his uh, assets is about 30 millions of dollars, which is a really huge number for Russia. So Vladimir Rodolfovich Solovyov was just, you know, producing equipment for nightclubs, enjoying his life in the post-Soviet Russia in the 90s, but in 1997, ironically, Natalia Sindeyeva, the founder of the main oppositionary channel of Russia, which is called TV Rain, she invited him to her radio, which was called Silver Rain at that moment. They had that program, which was called English Mornings. And once one of the hosts of the program got sick. And so Natalia Sindeyeva was looking for a person who will take the place of a host of that program for only one day. And somebody, some of her friends or somebody from the radio in, uh, invited Vladimir Rodolfovich Solovyov because he was speaking English pretty nice because she just he just came back from the US and he got that, you know, language experience. And to be honest, he speaks in English and Russian pretty competent. So I'm not surprised why later Natalia Sindeva was impressed and the listeners of the radio, they were impressed by him and they decided to hire him for a full-time job. Natalia Sindeva gave Vladimir Solovyov an opportunity to debut in media sphere and later she really regretted this. I often tell myself I'm a good person. However, I have one sin. I invited Vladimir Solovyov, the host of uh, the Russia One TV channel, to our radio. Those days he had no relations to journalism. Nevertheless, once he appeared on our radio, I heard him and I made Dima take him to our radio and to sign a contract with him. We started to develop Solovyov and invest in him. And this is how I gave birth to whatever you call it. In a year, he was invited to work on a TV and he worked on different TV channels with different programs. And it's interesting that he is really productive. He used to be really productive to produce a lot of content, but it's always called in the less creative way. For example, Passion by Solovyov, Breakfast with Solovyov, Solovyov Life. So everywhere it's like Solovyov and something. Really creative. Before 2003, Solovyov was just regular independent journalist, working on different independent TV channels or radios, having his own programs and telling his opinion. For example, in 2001, NTV, which is, as I mentioned, the biggest and I think the best TV channel at that time about politics, about life of the society, about everything, it got shut down by Putin because they were criticizing the government and Putin especially. And so in 2001, uh, 15,000 people, protesters, went to the pro streets of Moscow to show that they are against shutting down NTV, which is, you know, pretty obvious because it was the best and independent, what's more important, TV channel. What's interesting that Solovyov, at the moment of shutting down NTV, was protecting NTV from shutting down. He was criticizing the government and he was the person who said, Putin has no right to leave us with no choice. He also said that it's pity that only 15,000 people went to the streets to show their position. And later, I don't know, maybe like 15 years after that, he will say that those 2% of shit, as he said, who went to the streets of Moscow against corruption to show that they are against corruption and they will not live with this. He called them the always permanent 2% of shit. То есть вечные 2% дерьма. И вот эти 2% дерьма считают, что они здесь власть, считают, что они могут портить людям праздник. That's how your opinion is being changed. 
whether you are working for the government or not. Already in the year of 2003, the opportunist and propagandist Solovyov started to show up. He was invited to work at one of the biggest state TV channels, which is called Russia One, and he understood that he was going to work there as a propagandist, because in 2003, in the interview to Novaya Gazeta, new newspaper, he said this, Television always has the same functions. STS entertains people, TV channel Russia propagandize. There are no other options and it will always be the same. Moreover, in the year of 2005, he took part in the meeting of youth movement which was created by United Russia of Party, the party of Putin, and he said that famous speech about Putin trying to protect him. Nowadays, people think that Putin is responsible for everything. An old man died in the street, Putin is to blame. Light bulb burned out, Putin is to blame. Somebody won't be able to wipe their ass and they will blame Putin too. We need to change that. Vladimir Rudolfovich Solovyov started to build his propagandist career in the year of 2003 and he still is doing that and doing pretty successfully while threatening the whole world with nuclear weapons. It's really interesting to follow the difference between his uh, opinions on Putin throughout the years. For example, in 2001, he was saying and criticizing Putin that Putin has no right to leave us with no choice. But later, in 2015, he filmed this movie about Putin, which is full of love and respect to the president. For, or for example, here is his speech about administration of president. So he says, Solovyov, from independent journalists who used to criticize Putin and the government, became the Russian propagandist, Russian Goebbels, he started to be so critical about any criticism he would receive, from the internet especially. It's always like a meme how he used to ban every single person on Twitter, unless it was not bad in Russia, on Twitter about just any kind of criticism. If somebody would ask him a question like, why are you saying this because it's a governmental take. Уберите этого Эль Омбра дегенератор, чёрт твоей матери. Забаньте это укранацистскую сволочь, чтобы сдохла. Наталья Синдеева, who brought Solovyov into the media sphere, later said that Solovyov doesn't believe in anything. Конечно, Solovyov ни во что не верит, и это просто циничный, конъюнктурный. Более того, он первый, кто попытается переобуться, когда всё поменяется. Many public figures in the Russian media sphere used to make fun out of Vladimir Solovyov because of his propagandist takes. Such people as Urgand, as Boris Grebenshikov, a famous musician, also a sport journalist Utkin and many others. Before the war, Solovyov was just a huge meme which was full of aggression to anything what criticized Putin or himself. Вот он пишет, точнись, Вова, у нас страна в полной жопе. Конечно, у тебя страна в полной жопе. У тебя президент Зеленский. At some of his programs on TV, he literally kicked out people if they were saying something against his opinion. Охрана! Придите сюда, я не хочу морать руки. Нет. Уберите этого человека отсюда. Нет. Вот этого отсюда убрать. Потому что он у меня нет. Это вранье. Читайте книги и историю. He was just kicking them out like they have no right to say something. They were debating, which is the main goal of any political commentary, you know, program on TV, right? I have some questions about adequacy of Vladimir Solovyov since he always screams on his workers who works with him on the lives. Oh my gosh, it's such a huge topic when he just screams at people for not showing the video he wants at the second. Соберитесь, пожалуйста. У вас есть это видео Лаврова? Или этого видео Лаврова у вас нет? Видео у вас нет. Хорошо, тогда обратитесь, пожалуйста, к тем, у которых это видео есть. Вы по-прежнему не способны это сделать. А я не могу ни подматываться, ни разматываться. Вы начнитесь на конец. When they used to show different comments from the live chat, and at some moments they were pretty funny ones, to be honest. However, we could make fun of Vladimir Solovyov for an endless period of time, 
unless there is war against Ukraine. This part of the video I call a war criminal Vladimir Solovyov, and I will explain you why. In 2014, Ukraine had its revolution, so-called Maidan, and then Russia, while there is a revolution in Ukraine, annexed Crimea, while Ukraine was, you know, at the weakest position at that time. After that, Solovyov absolutely changed his rhetoric about Crimea and about Ukraine in general, because in 2008, he was saying that the person who will wage a war against Ukraine is a war criminal, and that Ukraine is a brother nation to us. Осуществить такого рода акт является преступником, при том я не могу себе представить, какого размера. В Украине живут братские нам абсолютно по духу, по крови, по общей истории люди, война с которыми является самым страшным преступлением, которое все может только придумать. Later, at one of his conferences, an old lady asked, are we going to return Crimea back? And he replied, Потому что, во-первых, нет никакого юридического основания. Я понимаю вопрос. Не дай бог, а зачем вам Крым? Ну, Хрущев уже отдал абсолютно легитимно. Были законодательные акты. Он это сделал на основании определенных документов. Если мы вдруг говорим, это значит война. Вы хотите воевать с Украиной? Сколько украинских и русских жизней вы готовы положить на то, чтобы захватить Крым, который давно уже стал татарской территорией, крымских татар? But later, in 2014, once Russia next Crimea and once, you know, the government they've sent some new papers for him to discuss, he said this. Since Russia annexed Crimea in 2014 and there was a revolution in Ukraine, Solovyov just occupied the TV space of Russia. For almost nine years in prime time, he was saying, discussing something about Ukraine, that Ukraine is led by Nazis. He was preparing Russians for a bigger war. And we understand this. I personally understand this only, you know, now, once there is a really huge scale war. He got this huge task by Putin for nine years of preparation to the war against Ukraine. At some point before the war, it almost became a meme that every single evening at the prime time on the main state TV channels, Vladimir Solovyov and his program like Solovyov Live or like Evening with Vladimir Solovyov, they discuss how things are bad in Ukraine, how Ukraine is dying, that Ukraine is full of Nazis and everything. I remember it sometime I was visiting my grandma and she used to watch a lot of TV. I mean, that's the only source of information she has. She had, I'm sorry, she passed away recently. And... At some point, even she, in 2017, she told me, why do we always discuss Ukraine? Don't we have our inner problems, for example? So even my great-grandma, she felt that it's just not right to discuss Ukraine while and just think about any other countries while you have so much problems in Russia inside of your country. Solovyov even beaten the Guinness record of the longest weekly life in 2019 which was about 24, 25 hours, 53 minutes and 57 seconds. And it was from 18th of March up to 24th of March. So that guy, he was literally on the TV and most of Russians watched him for every single day in a week for 25 hours. Mind-blowing. At some point, people even started to call his programs and say like, look, can you please stop discussing Ukraine? Людмила, вы не люди. What's interesting that two days before the invasion, Vladimir Solovyov was speaking high of bravery of Adolf Hitler. Hitler, кстати, был лично очень смелым человеком. В отличие от этого Гульфиксерура не косил от армии. Два железных креста. Да. Воевал и воевал доблестно во время Первой мировой войны. Well, considering his rhetoric that we are the only nation like Russia that fights against Nazism in the world and we are the last defenders of Christianity in Europe. Мы последние защитники христианства. И заметьте, как плечом к плечу с нами. Стоят наши братья-мусульмане. 
Since 24th of February, the start of the war, Vladimir Solovyov became the voice of propaganda about aggression against Ukraine. Because, you know, he's saying if we would fight against Ukraine, we would win in three days, we would take Kiev in three days. But we are fighting against the whole NATO, we are fighting against this huge military, militaristic machine of NATO. This is why we cannot take Ukraine at the moment, because the whole powers of NATO are over there. I actually think if Russia would be in a real fight with NATO, like Russia will lose, like Moscow will be, would be like capitulating in three days <laughs> in, instead of Kiev, but it's another topic, okay? He is the person who threats to nuke almost every single country once they say that they do not support uh, Russia against this war in Ukraine. Джо, а мы не собираемся бахать по Украине тактическим оружием. Если дела пойдут ядерным тактическим оружием, да, ядерным тактическим, спасибо, я хочу. Если уж мы жахнем, Джо, то стратегическим. И не по Украине, не по Украине совсем. Поэтому, Джо, ты себя не успокаивай. I blame personally Vladimir uh, Rudolfovich Solovyov for leading an aggressive war and brainwashing uh, Russians so they would support the war against Ukraine saying those cannibalistic takes that Ukrainians are Nazis, that Ukrainians are not even people, that we are fighting some kind of holy war. We are the last defenders of Christianity in Europe, in the world, and the whole world is sat satanic. He is literally, I don't know, at some point when I was, was listening to his speech in, speeches, and I have listened to like 20 hours of his speeches in the last week, I was literally feeling like I'm playing a freaking Doom 2. Like he is literally the only one person who is fighting demons in the whole world. Must. Let this guy to take a chainsaw and to kill everyone around him. This is how he treats the whole world right now. Telling lies on Russia is a really profitable business. Before the war, the foundation of Navalny found property to, which is owned by Vladimir Solovyov for more than 1 billion of rubles, which is about 15 millions of dollars. And what's interesting that after the war, all of his property was secreted by the government so right now you cannot find it by any official me measures as i also mentioned he owns three mansions in italy at the lake of coma by the total amount of assets cost about 15 millions of euros and he even said like yeah i have it why don't you have it Да, я купил недвижимость за границей. И вам советую, если можете себе позволить. Это дешевле, чем покупать дачу где-нибудь у нас на берегу какого-нибудь нашего теплого моря. In the matter of fact, he also got the permanent residency in Italy in the country of NATO. So he blames, you know, NATO countries being satanic. But at the same time, he, he used to live in Italy and live in a pretty, pretty happy life in a NATO country. The newspaper Sabisednik in 2020 said that his salary is actually about one million of dollars a month. I don't even know if that's true, but I wouldn't be surprised. Because this guy, he owns so much property, so much money. He literally lives like, like a sheikh for more than 20 years. And he tries to explain everything by some kind of mysterious business in the 90s. But since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, his mansions in Italy were arrested and he had to spend time resting in some kind of sanatorium in the Podmoskovia, like somewhere close to Moscow. Later, some members of Navalny Foundation, they got into his arrested uh, mansions in, in Italy at the Lake of Kama. Этого не будет никогда, потому что Владимир Соловьев сюда уже не приедет. Его имущество арестовано, знаете, все соседи. 
Вся округа, все озеро Кома, пусть это знает. Сюда, это тот самый участок, на который мы проникли перед Новым годом. Участок Владимира Соловьева на озеро Кома. Его э, замечательное владение, вот его дом, 14, если не ошибаюсь, комнатный. А later some activists, they got to his mansions also, and they've painted the mansion in a red color, which represents the blood Russia spills every single day fighting in Ukraine. Also, what's interesting is that the swimming pool was colored in, in red, which is kind of symbolic in my opinion. And I guess before the war, he was planning, okay, I'm gonna be that Russian Goebbels for maybe like five, five years, I'm gonna make tons of money, and then at one point, I'll just, I'll, I'll just quit. I'll go to Italy, I'll get a citizenship, and I'm gonna be living a happy life over there. Well, didn't work out, right? So now, his YouTube channel, yes, he used to have a YouTube channel, is blocked, and he has to even go for jogging. In the company of security guards, because there were some cases when he was attacked by some others, for example, in one of his episodes, in one of his lives, he appeared on the live with a huge bruise under his eye, but he refused to explain how did he get it. And I, I remember there were some callings for, you know, violence against Vladimir uh, Slavyov. I personally do not support any kind of violence, but for this guy, I guess I can make an exception. Vladimir Rodolfovich Slavyov, he's gonna be obviously listed among the worst propagandists of the whole modern world on the same level as Joseph Goebbels and he's just gonna be called Russian Goebbels. He's to blame of waging and starting a war against Ukraine even though he's not a president, but he is Goebbels. Is Goebbels as responsible as Hitler in having this second world war, in having a genocide of Jewish people? Yes, he is. So the same goes for Vladimir Solovyov. I think there are two possible ways of his destiny. The first one, he will just go to hog at some point when Putin gonna lose his power and some others, some other people will come to, to the power in Russia. So he will be just given up by those people and will send to hog. Or he will follow the Goebbels destiny when, you know, Goebbels literally poisoned the whole family of uh, his six children, his wife and himself with cyanide and just kill himself. So it was me, Zach the Russian, thank you for watching this video. In the next one, we're gonna be discussing uh, the statements that Solovyov made since the start of the war about nuking the whole world. I know you can throw up, so make sure to take your throwing up container. So anyway, it was me, Zach, once again, thank you for watching this, and you know, there are many ways to support me if you want to, like you can find it all in, in the description below. Also make sure to support Ukrainian refugees in Belize, to organization Volunteers Belize, and just to support the Ukrainian army in general. So yeah, thank you so much. I hope uh, Ukraine wins and Putin dies. See ya. Смотрите всюду и подписывайтесь. Подписывайтесь.